Hello there, I'm Bob with Turtle Tough Shelter Systems. We want to take a moment and introduce you to our geodesic dome based emergency shelter system. A couple of years ago we decided to uh, make ourselves, a friend of mine and, and myself, the strongest possible shelter we could to uh, provide shelter in the wild should we have an earthquake or some other emergency and need to move outside of our homes and live in the wild in a tent situation. Uh, we decided to base that on the geodesic dome. As most of you know, a geodesic dome uh, has been around since about the 50s. Buckmeister Fuller is the inventor of it. Man was a genius. Uh, the structure is based on spheres and triangles, neither of which can be compressed, so it makes it extremely strong. Uh, along those lines, we decided to shape it uh, like the geodesic dome, and so that's what we've come up with. We had several criteria initially. We wanted to make it low cost. There are many um, fairly expensive tents on the market. If you want a four season tent, which assumedly we would have to have, you want, if you're going outside in the winter time, you need a tent that, uh, or a shelter that will uh, protect you from snow and cold weather, as well as the rest of the seasons. This will do that. Many of the army tents cost 4,000 up to $11,000. We wanted our shelter to be affordable for not only for us, but for others who, like us, wanted to have good substantial shelter but not have to mortgage your house to get it. So we've been able to keep the cost low, and we'll tell you how we did that. The second criteria was we wanted to be very lightweight and portable. So even a, uh, a, a woman necessarily by herself could load the components into a minivan and, and flee an area that might be in danger, hurricane, earthquake, what have you. Um, three, we wanted to have it extremely strong, which the geodesic dome as the base frame for this structure, it is extremely strong. Now, you'll notice the cover material. We researched a lot of cover material and we decided to go with this material because it's a lot like the material they put over the Denver airport and you've seen similar structures where they use the, the new space age polymers. It's extremely resistant to ultraviolet light. This is rated at over three years constant exposure. It has a grid system as you get closer you'll see it built into it so that even if a tree were to fall and puncture a hole in it, it normally cannot be ripped even with extreme pressure on it so you don't get a shredding of the cover. So it's very durable, uh, very strong cover. To keep the cost down, we did not cut and sew it into a dome shape. We have a large square piece of material that goes over the dome and to necessitate fitting a square over a dome, you need to make pleats in it. But the pleats, although they are not aesthetically pleasing, they are very strong because you have no seams to rip. Uh, we'll go inside now, I'll show you the door here and uh, we'll go inside and show you the rest, of the rest of the structure. Come on in. And as you can see, now we're inside the Turtle Tough shelter. The door is quite spacious. We've designed it so that it uh, takes two of our triangular sections uh, we remove the crossbar. You can leave that down most of the time unless there's a large storm and then you would want to replace it for strength. Uh, the cover door is basically attached with strong number 10 zippers. It's easy to roll up, put out of place. Uh, let's go across and I'll show you the, the strength of the frame. Now the frame material, we did quite a bit of research and there are several geodesic dome designs around. Uh, some some very nice ones. Most of them are made out of steel. Steel is four times heavier than the aircraft alloy that we used. We uh, met with a metallurgist and decided to make it lightweight, but yet we didn't want to sacrifice strength. This is four times lighter, this alloy is four times lighter than steel and 87 percent as strong. The strength of this dome uh, is engineered to take 150 mile an hour winds. Most of our houses will not handle that type of winds as we saw from Katrina down in uh, in New Orleans. So we wanted a structure then that would be extremely strong and resistant to wind without having to have lots of guy ropes like you would have on a normal tent. I'll demonstrate. I uh, unfortunately a little heavy here. I weigh about 300 pounds. You wouldn't want to do this from a bar. You could deform the bar but from the hubs it distributes the weight equally over the whole structure. It doesn't quiver or vibrate when I put that kind of weight on it. We've calculated that each hub would take about 500 pounds before you would get any structural deformity. Basically in a, a frame of this type, any load upon it distributes the load equally over the whole frame and that's where it gets its enormous strength. The individual bars are fairly fragile but as a unit it's unexcelled in terms of strength and longevity. We've uh, used large stakes, 24 inch stakes equally spaced around the perimeter to stake it to the ground with uh, 
tie wraps around those hubs to hold it down. We've, I've personally been in it at 70 mile an hour gusts and thunderstorms. No movement. You'll get a little rattling of the cover, but no movement or creaking of the structure at all. Um, I'm going to take just a moment and show you. In, in this scenario, you can use air chairs or hammocks, if you wish, to multiply and extend the floor space. The floor space will hold probably 15 people around the perimeter and in the middle, but you can also hang up uh, several hammocks, sleep people above there if you wish. It's high enough that you'll notice we've put up a net and you can put up several of these nets around and use them because it's nine to ten feet tall, depending on the terrain it's sitting on. You can use these little cargo nets to put your bedding and so forth up off the floor for utilitarian use and to get rid of the, the clutter on the floor so that then you can have a large floor space to live in. The floor space is 24 feet in diameter, 9 feet high, which equates out to 452 square feet, which is about the size of a modest apartment. Uh, with given the strength uh, and the size of the structure, you could comfortably uh, have a family with several children live in it throughout the year and be safe and, and sound. Now we've also included some lightweight space age insulation, uh, multiple layers of mylar, air, and aluminum and we can turn around and pan in on a piece of this. We put up just a few pieces to show what it looks like. We include in our kit uh, a complete uh, insulation kit which can be put up over the entire structure which uh, has a very high R value and will help to hold the heat in and keep the cold weather out. Also we have provided uh, and we'll set up and show you that in just a moment uh, a nice wood stove that you can use to keep warm of course. You can also use it to cook uh, to put a small stove on and to bake goods and the like, assuming we were in a survival situation. You must have three things. You must have food, you must have clean water, and you must have shelter, either clothing and or a structure and a way to keep warm. Those are the three triads, sides of the triad of survival in terms of an emergency situation to keep you safe. Next we'd like to show you uh, the stove. You could use almost any good wood stove to help keep you warm, but uh, we've decided to choose this small Great Northern stove. It's portable. It uh, comes apart, has 18 inch legs that come apart, go inside, all the stove pipe comes apart, goes inside, so you've basically got one little 30 pound satchel to be able, again, to carry quickly with you into a safe area from a danger area in the event of an emergency. Uh, this is large enough, it's a wood stove of course, large enough that you can cook on top of it. You can get some of the little uh, fold-up ovens. Coleman makes one that you can set on top of that, bake bread, whatever in it. Uh, it has air control, so you can control the, the amount of heat that is put out so it doesn't get too hot for you. Uh, you can put it anywhere pretty much in the structure. It has two more lengths of, uh, of exhaust pipe flue, and we have a special ring that uh, you can install with a kit that goes through the fabric so you have a good fireproof uh, jack, as they call it, flue jack, to the outdoors. Um, if you see the floor, we've also included with our, with our full kit uh, a floor which is large enough that it's one piece and it, it comes up on the edges in like a bowl and we have clips that can fasten, snap-on clips that can fasten to uh, the frame to hold it like a dish. So if water were to run under the structure, it's not going to get your bedding and your clothing wet. Let's talk just a little bit about the cover. As we mentioned, the cover is rated at three years uh, plus uh, from ultraviolet exposure, wind and so forth is rated extremely strong for puncture resistance. You may want to take a close up of, of the uh, actual grid system. You'll see it quarter inch grids. This has reinforcing uh, nylon members in it so that it prevents it, even in the event that it's punctured, from ripping and tearing in a wind. Uh, in terms of how do we assemble this, let's discuss just a little bit about what it takes, of course, to assemble it. In terms of carrying it, the whole assemblage weighs 220 pounds in six packages, excluding the stove. Uh, the the frame of the structure, the geodesic frame, is 120 members, comes with fasteners. The entire frame can be put up uh, by two people without a ladder, starting at the top and just raising it as you go, uh, in two hours or less. Um, so it's very quick to set the frame up. Once the frame is set up, of course, then you can go ahead and put the insulation on it and then put the cover, the whole cover material over the top. The cover then is pulled underneath the bottom of the frame, pulled tight, you make your pleats wherever it's convenient for those pleats to be made. You raise it up, you cut off the excess material and we provide 45 four inch long clips that clip over, snap, clip right over the bars at the bottom and then a small set screw very quickly goes into it so it holds the entire cover as one integral uh, 
piece of the of the dome structure. So it's very strong. Uh, as I mentioned, it's withstood very strong winds. We've observed uh, 70 mile an hour plus without the cover coming loose at all. Uh, then the floor is put in, pulled tight, and snapped with additional snaps to hold it tight against and keep keep it wrinkle free to hold it tight against the frame. Um, we also, in our entire kit, we provide uh, the door uh, zipper materials that are easy to apply. Uh, one window. Uh, we provide a lighting system so that you can generate electricity, 12 volts of electricity uh, from sunlight. And we use that. Then you can take a battery from your car, if you have handy an RV battery, and keep that charged. And that would run your, your lights. We have various types of LED and to light up the inside at night so you can have light. So basically, we have the whole system. The frame, the cover, the floor, the doors, the windows, uh, the heating system, the stove, and the lighting system, and the insulation, all for one low, low price. We invite you to go to our website and explore it further uh, in our gallery where we have lots of photographs. That's TurtleToughShelters.com. TurtleToughShelters with an S.com. Thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you soon.